just before we get fully started in this review, just want to welcome everybody to the video. This is a Last of Us review for the PS4, so it's the remastered version. I hope you've played it by now, because it's, what, seven, eight year old nearly, so I... This will be a spoiler heavy review, where I will be going in depth, deep down, deep down dive into The Last of Us. You have been warned. Jimmy! Jimmy, I am warning you! Oh my god! Don't! <laughs> you, you shot him. Sarah. I saw him this morning. Sammy, there is something bad going on. And we have got to get out of here. Do you understand me? Yeah. Tell me, come on. Come on. In a world where the mushroom people have taken over the earth, and they're all very, very hungry, where hobos have become smugglers in a dark, dark future. I don't know how far in the future this is, but 20, 30 years, something like that, something stupid like that, aye. And where a smell that would linger off of a person's ass would bring a tear to the eye and burn up all the nostril hairs, they would singe like fuck. And that is basically, that, that's the Last of Us review over. Of course I'm only joking, you don't get off that lightly. Not even, not even half that lightly. All joking aside, I think this is a fucking wonderful game. I'll start with the stupid voices. I know that annoys some of you, so. Let's just do more silly voices, shall we? Uh, the, the, the Last of Us is what I would liken to T2 or The Dark Knight. Or any other such cinematic masterpieces. It is a video game cinematic masterpiece. People have likened it to the video movie game type thing because it's so cinematic. That's why I think making a TV series about Last of Us is, you know, fucking pointless because it's never going to match what's come before it. Not in a million years. Ellie is going to be played by somebody else and I'm going to be sitting there the whole time going, that's no Ellie, that's some other dick playing the part and I, I don't like it. Unless they get Ellen Page to play the part, we they quite clearly modelled that whole character off of her persona. Sounds like her, looks like her. Aye, you're not going to convince me otherwise. No. So where will we start? Start with the atmosphere in The Last of Us because it's it's. You could fucking cut it out the air with a knife and put it on a piece, and a piece is a sandwich to you non-Scots, okay? So it's heavy as, as buck or duck. Heavier than, say, a McDonald's restaurant in the middle of America, full of obese people. That's how heavy this is. I mean, we're talking like extraordinarily heavy. Mm -hmm. I'd actually like in the atmosphere to such games as like the Metro series, if you've ever played those. If you haven't, please do not miss out and go play those games right away. I mean, play Last of Us first, then play them, and I will cover them in a future video. Probably not too distant future, actually. Aye, uh, so it's, 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 it's right there with the atmosphere, I mean, it's nailed it. I just hope the sequel is just as heavy, if not heavier. God, if it gets any heavier, I'll not be able to bloody well breathe. So the game follows the exploits and adventures of one Joel. I don't know his second name, actually, I've never even thought of that until now. So you get Joel, then you get Tess. And Ellie as the cargo, the human... So Joel's a basically a human trafficker at this point, right? But he's trafficking the cure for the mushroom disease. Don't know how you cure that. A mushroom disease, you think? Doesn't matter. Codriceps, I think it's called. Which is actually a real-life disease, but it's typically found in ants. And what'll happen is... Oh yeah, enough of the fucking science lesson, okay? Let's just get on with it. What was I going to talk about? Why the characters? The characters are brilliant in this game, right? They're all snarky bastards. They're all grumpy, and they all look like they smell, in fact, I think they should get a mod going and have like a sort of vapour trail off all these bastards. So if you can just imagine Joel as a smelly Han Solo, honking hunter, well he used to be a hunter, hunters are a faction of bad guys, they basically, well they hunt, and they're quite brutal. And this game is just full of brutal imagery, like fucking hell, like Jesus, can things get any more disgusting? So Tess dies early on in the game and I was kind of irritated by that because I actually liked her character. She was a pain in the arse but at least she had some balls, you know. More than Joel. Joel's like, oh, I don't know about doing this. She's like, shut up and do it. And he's like, right, okay then. Then it turns out she gets bit and she's like, well, I'm, that's me, gubbed. And he's like, ah, you are, not you? 
and just leave her. And the police catch up with her and shoot her. Police brutality. Well, I, I say police, they're just militia. They just dress up like the police because they're in blue and black, right? So they show up, and then you smash them to fuck. Stab them, shoot them, choke them, burn them alive, blow them up with bombs. You name it, you can do it. You battle them over the head with poles and pikes and fucking big two by four chunks of wood. And it's just mental, right? It's just mental. So Joel and Ellie go on the run and they, they meet up with one of Joel's old pals called Bill, although I say pals, you could have forgiven them for being fucking enemies. Bill's a grumpy old bastard, his partner fucking ditched him because he thought he was a cunt and this is where Ellie's character starts to shine a lot more than before because she starts to argue with this guy. He basically calls him a fat bastard, fat, fat perverted greedy lazy bastard who stinks. And she steals one of his nudie books. Now, Bill's gay, so why is he got nudie books with women in it? I don't get it. I suppose any port in the storm, really, eh? Any porthole in the storm? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, I had to say it right. I, f I fucking had to. Let's move on. Another thing that The Last of Us nails that very few games do is the feeling of part of a larger world when it's a linear title. There's very, very limited exploration. You will get a wee bit, but it's surely no much. You'll get maybe like if you're in a like a, a street, you'll get a wee alley to look about and maybe a couple of deserted shops. The first big game I remember making me feel like that was Half Life Two, and the first Halo, and the Metro games. They're all in there, and they all make you feel like you're part of a gigantic world. That's just a, you can see off into the distance and fucking. Like, I could go there, but you can't, annoyingly. Or maybe it's no annoying. Maybe if it was open world, it would lose something in translation. And it's not a short game either. About 18 hours, maybe 20, depending on difficulty, how many times you die, how much fucking around you do, and I do plenty of that. Because there's collectibles, you get Firefly pendants, you get comic books, you get journal entries, all sorts of notes, you'll find safe combinations, and you even have optional audio, like, interactions with the characters, you'll, you'll, you'll stop, and a wee speech bubble will appear over a character's head, and you press triangle, and you'll have a wee, you'll have a wee bit of conversation, you know, like, oh, what's that, that's an ice cream van, what the fuck? an ice cream van, it's like something that delivered ice cream. Your ass. What is this? Oh. This is an ice cream truck. An ice cream truck? Yeah, Henry told me about these. They'd sell ice cream out of the truck. What? No way, Joel? That's true. This thing would drive around and play real loud, creepy music, and kids would come running out to buy ice cream. You're totally fucking with me. Mm-mm, serious. <laughs> Man, you lived in a strange time. <laughs> Told you so. That is an actual conversation. It goes slightly differently, of course. Less of the Scottishness and more of the Americanisms. Whatever, dude. Christ, I sounded like Bart Simpson there, didn't I? Bart the Fart Simpson. The game's also chock for um, upgrading and tinkering and all that pish. Find guns. You don't buy them. You find them. You find all of them in the laying about the world, stewing about the world. Bows and arrows, shotguns, pistols, magnums, rifles, flamethrowers, you name it. But no grenade launcher or no rocket launcher. That's really disappointing actually. Fuck's sake game. That's it. Zero out of ten. Put it in the bin. Delete, uninstall, fucking set it on fire. So you get your upgrade all these weapons, right? Which is kind of standard fare now for any game of its type. You, you also get throwable things like molotovs and... Aye, that's about all I use is the Molotovs and the fucking pipe bomb things that get wee bits of scissors sticking out them. They're quite funny when they, you throw them at something and it sticks in them and they're like, well fuck, boom, deed. Enemies, what enemies have you got? You get like, infect it. Mad bastards are run about chanting, fucking, you punch them to death. Clickers, the minute they get a hoodie, you, unless you've got the right tools and the right skills, they will just kill you in one hit. So you, to get away from a clicker you need to have a shiv and you need to have the ability to use the shiv on the clicker if it grabs you. And if you upgrade that a second time right, the shiv does the break so I just let every cl clicker grab us and then stab, grab, stab, grab and stab, belter, keeping that one handy. I'm coming with you at the grab and stab! The melee weapons you find run about the place 
you can also upgrade them if you've got the appropriate, you know, utensils. You can put scissors on the end of them and it'll kill any enemy, apart from a bloater. I've never got close enough to a bloater to actually try it, so... Uh. A bloaters are a pain in the hole. They throw, like, spore sacks at you and... No. If it's the rule of the game that the minute you breathe in spores, you're dead, how can you... It'll damage you if you're in the spore cloud, but you'll not die. I don't, I don't get that. It's like, what the fuck? What are you going on? Here you mate, you're throwing your sacks at me! Then you can throw a molotov at them and watch them burn to death. It's quite fun. A lot of running in this game and a lot of big set piece moments where you're got a sniper rifle or you're hanging upside no, down and you're shooting things in the heat or you're trying to shoot things in the heat. Now we need to remember here that Joel is just a prick and he's not been trained to fire a gun as far as I know. Because after the bit at the start of the game, which I'll kind of leave as a wee surprise for you, right? It skips 20 years later and he just looks like he's woke up after a three day bender. We'll say a three day bender. So I, I don't know if someone's trained him if I mean, he could fire again, but he's not a fucking crack shot. He's an old man. Must have been about 30 when the last of us started and then it skips ahead 20 years, so he's in his 50s. So he's, he's a bit tired, you know, they don't have cod liver oil in those days. Ni antidepressants, ni anti-inflammatories, so he's fucked. The amount of running about he's done, I'm surprised he's no deed. Oh, I'll be very surprised for the next game, we'll see how, see how long the old bastard lasts. 2.5 seconds, he'll pop a hip, fall over and die. I like the way the chapters in this game are set, it goes through the season, so it starts off in spring, goes to summer, autumn, winter, and then spring again, which is pretty cool, so you get to see a wee bit of it just gives the, 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 the whole game a, a wee bit of a diversity in its locales, so it's not all the same. Because you're in the Midwest, I, I think. I actually don't know where the game's set. I want to say it's set in Chicago, then you go, you might go east. Because I'd, I'd, I'd say I don't know, but it's um, it's just neat. It's neat, right? Soundtrack's amazing and all. Should have talked about the soundtrack earlier on in the video, but as long as it's there, I don't bother too much. And again, it's it's slow, melodic, apocalyptic sounds. It's none of your fucking band pish. It's just oh, it's just wonderful, and it's actually kind of relaxing in a strange way. It really reminds me of the soundtrack from Metro. I'll bring this up again. Metro, yes. I do have a digital copy of the soundtrack on PS3, but that annoys me because it's kind of stuck in the PS3. There'll probably be a way to take it off and whole load of jiggery pokery, but I might see if I can get the CD at some point because it'll be nice thing to have in the old collection. So it's just a really, this is just a really, really well made game. There's no no way, two ways about it. It doesn't matter if you don't like it, you're never going to take that away from me. EVER! Brilliantly made game. Sometimes it's had uh, anxiety inducing when you're surrounded by the mushroom undead. Mushroom head undead! Mate, they could have got the band Mushroom Head to do fucking songs for this, or like some sort of tunes, like, like the way Marlon Manson did for the Resident Evil movie. That would have been good. At least it would have fit the theme of mushroom zombies. Mushroom Head. No, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never touch another mushroom again. I don't even like mushrooms. It's fucking tasteless shite. This game did get DLC called Left Behind, and I will do a separate review for that. I wanted to do this because I think I should have done this ages ago, actually. And because the sequel's out in a, less than a week now, just just over a few days. Amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've, I've enjoyed making it. I'm a wee bit too warm, a bit grumpy, a bit tired. A wee bit low energy, again. But other than that, stoting stuff. I'll see you all in the next gen. Um, be good to each other and yourself. Because remember, tomorrow we may all be dead. Bye. Adios.